Well, welcome back to the shop build. So we got something kind of fun. We're gonna get started on the footing forms. So, and the stem wall. So what I have, we got, we got the footings all dug, the continuous footings around the perimeter of the shop. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just forming the stem wall. The, the footing is gonna pull right against the, the side of the, the dirt there. So a neat line footing. Uh, but I'm gonna hang the, the whole entire like five foot of stem wall uh, up here first. And I'm gonna have a kind of a special way of doing it. Cause there's like a hundred different ways of doing something. But this one here is I'm gonna repurpose the concrete forms, which are gonna be two by sixes. And I'm gonna reuse those into the framing later. So rather than doing plywood uh, here, five feet, and have a four foot sheet and then a bunch of rips and a bunch of wasted plywood. Uh, I planned on everything using the two by sixes. So you're gonna see the process here. So first what I got, I got the string line set. This string line is based off these batter boards we did in a previous video. And those batter boards are at finished floor. That is where the top of the stem wall is gonna get poured as well. So I'm gonna transfer this uh, intersection of the, the string line down to the footing okay and then uh, and that is the outside of the stem wall so two by four two, excuse me two by six is an uh, inch and a half thick so I'm actually gonna come over that inch and a half down on the bottom and I'm gonna put a string line and that's where I'm gonna put a whole various of stakes concrete stakes those over there and one on both sides of the stem wall and then I'm gonna put, and then I'm gonna start forming. So I'm gonna make sure that I have uh, the correct elevation of that first row because everything else goes uh, is based off of that. And also, um, uh, let's see, I'm gonna have the correct width. The and I'm also gonna make sure that I have 10 inches for my footing. So code wise, it only needs to be seven inches thick, and I believe 16 inches wide. Uh, this is going to be two foot wide, uh, more or less. Uh, and, well, not really less, but more in some places. Uh, and that's okay with me. So uh, being a five foot stem wall, I do have to have that engineered. So that's in the process right now. And I'm fully confident that an eight inch stem wall, two foot wide footing is, engineering wise with rebar two foot on center is going to be more than adequate. So. Well, let's get started and transfer that line down. All right, so I transferred the string line down and the inside of each one of these stakes is the line. And so I'm gonna put a new line kind of down low. And if you wrap around and lap it over itself, it holds it right in place, right on the side. So I'm gonna put it down over there. That'll be concrete and I'm gonna eyeball Nail, uh, pounding all these other stakes in an inch and a half over from uh, basically the thickness of the two by six. So and I'll drive those in and then I'll measure over, uh, let's see, plus three inches to eight. So 11 inches back to the other side. So I'll put the stakes on both sides. More or less, that's about where the top of the pudding is too. Oh, that's like five or 10 inches. Uh, now, 
each one of these that I put in. Here, George, let me show you a little trick to straighten out a concrete stick. Yeah. So this one's got a little bend in it. And the bend is right there. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so you do it this way. That's the outside corner, so I'm gonna have a stake right about here. And I'm eyeballing it, so I'm kind of just holding it so it moves about an inch and a half. Holes lining up. The way I want. About there. That's sort of solid. And then I'll come back and I'll measure. And on the other side, not in this corner, you can do it over here, so. Pretty straight, and I'm gonna go, try to go about every two foot on center with this. Each other that way I can run a string line or a, a, a tie wire around them and help hold it as a spreader down underneath it so two there so well we might be going about every three feet Well, welcome back everybody. We've got another one. Welcome to the shop build. So I'm Corey Rogers. I don't think I've introduced myself too much. I've been a carpenter for 26 years. And uh, right now I actually teach a carpenter apprentices. So we're working on the concrete stem wall and footing. It's a monolithic pour. So what a monolithic means, I got my footing and my stem wall is gonna be all poured together. This section here, is about five feet tall stem wall. So it does have to be engineered and that's in the process right now. All right, so I'm gonna be reusing my two by sixes from the concrete form like it is here. And then I'm gonna use it for my framing. That's not a typical way of doing it, but like, like construction and a lot of things, there's many, many ways of doing those things. So the snap ties I had and uh, so that kind of led me towards this as well. So uh, that's the plan. So you're gonna get to see the process. So I got both sides of this first row and there's gonna be two rows before it steps. Two rows, steps, two rows, steps uh, until I get to the other side. And then the very last row is gonna be a, a two by four. So just to get the elevation and things like that. Um, yeah, so also I'm gonna be working on the inside first around the whole perimeter. Get that all up and plumbed, braced off, all that sort of thing. And then I could tie my rebar to it. So that's that's the main reason for the inside or, or forming up the inside plus getting rebar that's bent on the outside corners. It's easier to get in when, uh, <coughs> uh, excuse me, when it's an outside corner. So if it was a, or excuse me, an inside corner. If it was an outside corner, the outside done first, it's just harder to get the rebar in uh, and that sort of thing. So 
thinking through your process um you know so i've been thinking through this for for a while now so got my elevation double check triple check my elevation we're still good uh two by four or excuse me a two by six is five and a half inches tall and i'm planning a snap tie every two two by sixes so that's roughly about a foot and i'm making sure not to just have a uh, 11 inches between my steps i'm actually doing 11 and a quarter which is about the thickness of one of those snap ties so at this point here i'm going to get my second row on these are all shot to grade which is great um, when i'm going through when i first started that first row always takes the longest because I'm trying to get it just right to the elevation, make my marks. Uh, you can see right here. So this would be an outside corner right here. Uh, make sure that next one is exactly eight inches because it's an eight inch stem wall and, and all that sort of thing. Trying to get that as lined and perfect as possible with the corners. The mid span, as long as I'm somewhat close when I go to brace it, I could push it over in a line. Uh, it's no problem, but elevation wise, um yeah so i'm also putting these these are my cutoffs for my uh those are two and three quarters thick or wide i should say those two by fours I had to rip those down uh because using these snap ties they're meant for a piece of plywood uh and then a two by four on edge well since i'm not doing that i had to kind of modify my strong backs so these are going to be called whalers those are called strong backs so and you're going to see I'm going to have two on each side at each. Uh, so four total at each snap tie. So and then it'll be a wedge pin on the other side of it, kind of holding it all together. All right. So something else that's important for laying out for your snap ties is laying out on a certain center. So in my case, I'm laying them out on a actually a three foot two and nine sixteen center. And the reason for it is um, it's a two by six that's 16 foot and it's actually uh, about seven eighths of an inch longer than that. And if you divide that by five, that's what it comes up with. And that way I can be using full length uh, two by sixes without having to 16 footers without having to, to trim them. So also trying to have your outside and inside uh, when possible uh the joints where the the two boards meet they should be meeting on a strong back so that side that i just did some of those i ended up having to move because i wasn't following that on center spacing like i should have been so um like i am going to be doing on this other side so this side here i'm going to carry all the way up to the top uh to finish floor get it kind of kicked off and, and that sort of thing. Uh, it, the process at this point is going quite a bit faster. Uh, I got one full length board and one that's cut and then reversing that so your seams do not line up. Also on that inside corner where uh, the end of the board is should all be the same. They sh there shouldn't be anything staggering on an inside form like, like I was at first. Those ripped pieces from the strong back that, that I have there, they're also to hold my form up. So it's not uh, gonna sag or move when I'm stepping on the form like I am right here. And my plan is after I pour the footing portion and up about a foot or so, that I'll come back and actually pull those out while the, the footing concrete is still uh, stiffening up, but not too stiff where I can remove those and as well as removing the stakes, the concrete metal stakes that are in the ground. So those are all gonna come out and during the pour process. Right now they're holding it to grade and also holding it somewhat in line. Uh, the kickers and the, the turnbuckles that I'll end up using, they'll actually be pushing the bottom over where it needs to be as well as the top. Uh, and then frankly, if the bottom's slightly off, that's okay because it's only the top that's gonna to be exposed. Well, we're here for another day and we got quite a bit done since the last little section. 
Uh, we got this corner just about done. We got to add some more screws uh, from our strong backs to our whalers, just to help keep things from bowing in. Of course, we still got to kick it off and, and get it nice and straight, but it's a good little start. Something I wanted to mention that, uh, you know, nobody's perfect and we always kind of learn things as a carpenter. You learn, you problem solve as you go, but something just to kind of uh, let you know when you're laying out your ties for something like this, still, they either got to be like a 16 on center or a two foot on center. In my case, I'm wanting to use a full 16 footer, which is actually 16 foot zero and seven eighths. Um, and, uh, but anyhow, so that divided by five, it works out to about three foot two and nine sixteenths. So that's the spacing that I'm, I'm going on with this here that way uh no matter what happens uh, you know because every other row is going to be a short board and then long boards and then a full board and that sort of thing uh and if i offset it you know one direction or another from that then it still stays on a on a on a board length uh for 16 foot and seven eighths so uh, today, I got, I got a two by four that I'm gonna be putting up here on the top that finishes out the, our height. And what I'm gonna try my best to do is get the top of that board right at finished floor. So um, I did notice that my batter boards, they weren't perfect. So I went around and checked that the other day. They weren't quite perfect. So I'm always gonna be referencing back to my benchmark, so. Um, yeah, and then I got some more strong backs to rip. So I've been using my table saw and my uh, shop back so I'm not using making too big a mess and ripping the, the strong backs down to the length I need for the snap ties. And uh, I got a few more to do that and going around the corner and, uh, and so forth. So uh, yeah, but that's I think gonna be it for this video and will be another video just continuing on finishing up uh, so it's going to be a little while before my rebar and other stuff so we can get that through the permit process, through the drafting process still. So um, right now I'm just getting things ready so that once I get those, I can pour. So that's the plan anyhow. So, so like always, be safe out there. Uh, wear all that protective gear that you need to be doing, like your safety glasses, ear protection, gloves, and that sort of thing. So. Just one way of doing it and uh, how I chose to do it. And uh, we'll keep going forward with what we got here. So see you next time.